Oh, welcome to the Black Lotus Hour. I'll be your host, Dr. Black Lotus himself. Definitely taking that guy. Like, Experimental Synthesizer is one of those cards that puts you in this awkward position of, like, I don't want to play it when I can't take advantage of a... If I hit a land, I don't want to play it if I can't take advantage of that. So it costs one. But you don't want to play it on turn one. And, like, the games... It's, like, as a, as a cube, like, the games aren't super grindy and long. So, like, drawing it on turn 12 isn't really a super viable option either. It's kind of like this weird, awkward middle spot. I kind of want to try Cityscape Leveler. This guy seems really sweet. Uh, I don't care about Faithless looting. Goldspan Dragon's good, but I don't want to. I want to steer away from red if I can. I mean, I don't want to steer away from it, but like, I'd rather try a new card that's colorless and doesn't commit me to anything. <sighs> Soul of Wind Grace, interesting. Discard a land, gain three. Discard a land, draw a card. Discard a land, soul gains indestructible until end of turn, tap it. Sure. Here's Unctus, Grand Metatect. Other blue creatures gain, whenever this creature becomes tapped, draw a card, then discard so they loot. Other artifact creatures get plus one, plus one. And you can turn uh, any creature into a blue artifact. Well, with Cityscape Leveler, uh, I might just want to take Bayou? Simic Growth. Yeah, if I had Unctus in the last deck, that'd be sweet. Um, Wedding Announcement's also new. Contagion's new. Do I just want Growth Chamber? I actually don't know. I think I'm just going to take Bayou. I can search for a Bayou. And Dotha Trium is just Bayou 2.0. Or Bayou 3.0, huh? Three, because it's a because it's triumph. Three three point oh. Guys. Okay. My uncle died of the unctus. Yeah, I used to call him Uncle Unctus. Okay. I think Bloodstained Mire is probably better than Triumph here, though. So I'm gonna take the Bloodstained Mire. Again, not super interested in committing. What if we're just Jund? What if we kissed underneath the taiga? <laughs> we could also take this Xander's Lounge. Which is a swamp and a mountain. But it also lets us be an island as well. Yeah, they put Doomsday in. It's one of the new additions. Clearly, someone did not watch my two YouTube videos on Monday and Tuesday about all of the changes to the Vintage Cube. Mm -hmm. So go check those out now. They're on the YouTube channel. That's the channel on YouTube. I want to take Xander's Lounge. I'd rather have blue cards. I'm sorry. <laughs> Six squirrels, I forgive you. I forgive you. This is just Jund with islands, you know. Jylands, if you will. <sighs> Interesting. Field of the Dead. Delayed Fireball Blast is also pretty cute. We call that Wet Jund. Uh, it's Moist Jund, thank you very much. Huh. I do, I do love rank. I love that you guys keep track of cards that I do and don't like. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna take this Field of the Dead. We're gonna make, we're gonna make Field happen. Oh, here's Gut again. That guy was kind of cool. Um, Cityscape Leveler. Here's an Ashen Rider and a Torsten. We're trying to reanimate, clearly. Then there's also a Hymn to Torok. Every land produces black right now, which is nice. This pack is actually great. I would take all of these cards, except for Spara's Headquarters and Oust. Like, this is a pretty good pack. Torsten does do work. Does Ashen Rider do more work, though? No, we have Cityscape Leveler. I'm going to take the Torsten. 
I like him to Torak. I just don't know what direction we're going in, but Cityscape Leveler and Torsten both kind of fulfill the same the same roles. Oh, a Zurin Orb, and we have Field of the Dead. Also a cool Gruff's Triplets. This is a card I put in my cube as well, because I was like, this card's cool. It's nine power for six mana. And then when it, when it comes into play, you make two tokens that are copies of it. And whenever a Gruff's Triplet dies, you put a number of 1-1 one, one counters equal to the power of that Gruff's Triplet on the other Gruff's Triplets. So you make three of them. When one dies, you put three counters on each of the remaining two, so there's six sixes. And then when one of those two dies, you put six counters on the other one. I was going to take Zurinor, but I actually think we're fabling. I think fable's probably better. Um, Badlands seems fantastic, especially if we have Field of the Dead. All right. So we're looking at Jund with a little blue, a little blue kicker, you know? I was tempted to take Zurinor because of lands, but I don't know if Field of the Dead really makes us lands. And I'd rather have the looting card when we have two cards that kind of want to be in the graveyard. Yeah, give QAnon Shaman another chance. <laughs> Holy shit, that's what you meant. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Jesus, that got me good, man. Oof. God. We got Garrick. Troll of Kazadoom. That's pretty good. It literally gets Bayou, Badlands, and Xander's Lounge right now. Blood Tithe Harvester is okay, too. I think we're taking Troll here. That guy just... screams. That guy just screams! What the hell does that mean? Is there anybody there? Oh, Simic Growth Chamber, eh? Oh, Lord of Wind Grace. Interesting. Are we landsing? You can only discard lands with this guy. Do I care about that? Ah, he's still a 5 4. Okay, you know what? We'll try it. Oh, Raging Ravine? Okay. Also, Thespian Stage, though. I like Raging Green better. There's no guarantee we're going to get... Oh, Molten Collapse came back? This deck seems pretty good. We have six different lands right now for Field of the Dead. They're all on color. This is like Super Jund. If we're Jundin, he's Jund. And if we're not Jundin, eh, he's still Jund. Oh, I actually have more G.I. Joe stuff here. Man, what a fucking Hasbro nerd. I have a mole rat. <laughs> that was funny. And I have this snake eyes and timber. Yeah, we'll just take Rankle here. As you guys know, I'm not a huge Rankle fan, but, you know, sometimes you gotta be pranking. So, I gotta go in like 10 minutes. I'm gonna need this video to go up tomorrow. This one? Might go up the next day. <laughs> you love it. I do. I do love Rankle. I don't like symmetrical abilities like Liliana of the Veil. I'm playing Magic to, to decimate my opponent. And when I can't decimate my opponent, because I'm too busy decimating myself, it's just not as fun. That's a Concealing, cor concealing Curtains is a sick fourth, fourth, 15th pick. That's I'll just play it. I don't even care. This is nine and six, and this is like literally 15 playables. All six of these lands are going in our deck. And the only card I wouldn't play here is probably Rankle. Okay, so maybe 14 playables. That's pretty sweet.
Every time I jump into a second draft, I'm like, man, I should have gone to the bathroom between these two drafts. Just keep drinking water, it'll pass. <laughs> that was my solution. Yeah, suffer for your art. <laughs> Smart. Oh, man. Sometimes I think I just stream so I can hang out with funny people in the chat. I myself am not that funny, but you guys really kill it, so. The only thing that gives me solace is that usually funny people like other funny people, so the only reason you guys are probably watching is that I'm entertaining uh, on some level. Do you think this pack is ever going to... Do you think this pack is ever going to come? Are we are we still live? Okay, haven't dropped any frames. Okay, well, yeah. Am I still connected? Hello. Oh, oh. Give me a little spook. Oh. Okay, we don't really have enough artifacts for a tinker here. Michael just went to the bathroom and I think he took a big old shit and I can, I like the aroma is wafting. It's a wafter. I don't think it's coveted jewel at six mana. None of the, there's no lands for us. <sighs> this pack's actually pretty terrible for us. Like I feel like it's grave trespasser. That guy's fine. Could be Omnath, but we have no way to splash white, and I'd rather just avoid it. Damnation might be fine. It's just an, it's an unexciting first pick, though. Eh, I don't know if we have nearly enough green to warrant a, a turn one elf. Like, we have a Bayou, and that's it that comes into play untapped. I don't think we're going to be elfing. I almost like Graveyard Trespasser a little better. Yeah, I'll take a first pick Trespasser and then just call it a day. Does Coveted Jewel come into play tapped or untapped? Valakut. If we get Dryad or Prismatic Omen, that's pretty sweet. Also, Woodfall Primus. Huh. Let's take the Valakut. So the first, the first draft, we're trying out the Gut Artifact Archetype. Almost had it, but then our opponent got Dark Depths... Crop Rotation, Thespian Stage, so that was fun. This draft, we'll try the Lands deck with Field of the Dead and Valakut, so. It does get rid of all the... Yeah, but this time we can get rid of them because we have cards like Molten Collapse and Cityscape Leveler. Red-blue decks, when you're not drafting cards like Treachery, can only get rid of creatures with power with toughness four or less. Black decks, however, can do whatever the fuck they want. Well, Damnation doesn't get rid of Merrill Age, and they never put him into play <laughs> on your turn. So, you know. Multiple reasons. I do love a Palantir. I like a Grief, too, though. I like a Bring to Light, too. Hmm, fascinating. Fascinating. We're not going to have five colors, though, so I don't think it's Bring to Light. I think it's just grief. Grief is just bananas. I would not take a, a skydiver over a grief. Skydiver is probably going to table, and we're also not trying to cast blue spells. January 2023. Wow. That's wild. Yes, do you remember when all black removal was like, you can kill any creature you want. 
except for black creatures. Don't kill artifacts either. See, look, here's a treachery. That's beautiful. That being said, I'm not going to take a double blue card. I will, however, take Trumpeting Carnosaur, though. That seems pretty good. Or Virtue of Persistence. Both of those seem excellent. <sighs> Trumpeting Carnosaur seems pretty good. Maybe the Virtue comes back. Dark Banishing was so amazing when I was like 16. It killed all the things. Couldn't kill artifacts still, though, right? No, it can't kill non-black creatures. It kill. It's the same. It's the same as terror, except it can kill. It can kill artifacts. Well, so a lot of that comes from terror. Back in you know, back from when Richard Garfield was designing the game, like terror. Um, the flavor of terror is obviously like you can't scare robots and you can't scare black creatures because they're already terrifying, right? So those cards you weren't able to kill with terror. But then design just sort of baked that into to black creatures, to black creature removal rather. So like that was just a thing that black creature removal did because they didn't realize like that wasn't how Richard Garfield wanted terror to black removal to work. He just wanted terror to work that way because it was flavorful and it made sense. I might just take Baleful Strix here. Actually, we have death and we have fabled of discard. Yeah, let's just take the, oh, a shallow grave, but death has got to be better, right? Who played black? Literally everyone played. Are you being, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. <laughs> I can't tell if this is sarcasm. This has to be sarcasm, right? Sit down, my child. Let me teach you about necropotence. Okay, thank God. Whew. Choose a creature type. We're not doing that. It's probably just Retrofitter Foundry, even though we just passed an Urza Saga. Where are the lands? I want lands, but I don't want white lands. What does Retrofitter do for us? Is it just Shouldered's Edict? It could just be Shouldered's Edict, actually. Is Urza Saga coming back? Probably not. Oh, Mosswood Dread Knight actually seems kind of cool, too. Well, two mana draw a card, and then you can play this guy. Whatever, I'll do that. We'll try him out. I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know? Who hasn't said that, Who hasn't said that before? I like Necromancy. Interesting. Lands entering untapped is not terrible. Jeez, I want Necromancy, Restless Fence, and Spelunking here. And Currency Converter. So there's definitely, this, this pack is definitely stacked for us. <laughs> Matt, I love that you're like, oh, this is making a lot of sense. I guess we're just taking Spelunking here. Maybe this is an 18 land deck because of File Smasher. This guy seems kind of busted. I don't, I don't know, man. Like you just play Vile Smasher, then you play a four drop and deal them four and then a five drop and deal. This card seems broken. I'm going to take Vile Smasher and see if it's nearly as good as it sounds. I feel vindicated by the flavor. Yeah, right. Like it wasn't, that's just how it was supposed to work. You know, like that's a just, that was just a terror specific flavor choice. It wasn't supposed to be all black removal. Uh, I don't want a damnation because we actually have 10 creatures. I think I'll just take Kaito. We already have Xander's Lounge. This is only pack two. It could be Misery Shadow too. I don't hate that guy. 
I'm going to take Kaito. Is this cute? Yeah. Th oh my God. Clearly Stuart did also not, didn't watch my videos on Monday and Tuesday about the like 80 plus changes to this cube. This is the normal vintage cube, but they made like, they made a significant amount of changes and they have a new philosophy where like each cube, they're going to rotate out certain archetypes and then bring in certain archetypes. So this time they took out Splinter Twin. Um, they took out something else. Oh, Dream Halls, like the Dream Halls combo pieces. That was a really good overgrown tomb. Um, and they brought in like a lot more cards that support a lands archetype. They brought in cards for Doomsday. Don't shame us for not watching every movie in the FTL cinematic universe. <sighs> Sir, you're a fucking funny guy. I'm a fan of yours. I'm a fan of your work. Uh, yeah, me neither. You, you, I hear you, Siri. Uh, is it just Fire Covenant? Yeah, let's take Fire Covenant. It's like a damnation, except it, you know, it's a little more choosy. Oh, Haunted Ridge. Came oh, Virgil of Persistence came back. Oh, man. That's spi that's a spicy meatball. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. This deck's looking good. I'm enjoying it. Baleful Strix and Liliana both came back. Good grief grief I'll take Liliana I don't I don't want to mess up our mana too much we already have a Kaito that I can probably side out or not side out but like not you know not not keeping the main deck <sighs> take a Goblet Shrine sure I mean we can get it with uh, Bloodstained Mire and it works with Feel of the Dead so I'm not gonna look a gift shock land in the mouth Last pick, Torok? That's even playable. All of our lands are black. Badlands, Bayou, Bloodstained Mire, Goblet Shrine, Overgrown, and Xander's Lands are all black lands. Underground Sea? Oh, Mana Drain. Oh, One Ring. Oh, there's a Prismatic Omen. Is that going to come back? Oh, boy. Not Mana Drain for the first time. This might be the, the in the past week I've passed Mana Drain one other time. I don't know why any would take anyone would take this when we have the Valakut though. I mean, what's the alternative though? Like Vampiric Tutor? It's not bad. Bold for value. <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. I hope I hope Oger or Kaslam comes back or the One Ring. I don't think the One Ring's coming back. I'm going to take Omen here. I think it's good. Uh, Arid Mesa or Marsh Flats or Animate Dead. Hmm. I mean, it's definitely Marsh Flats. You want, we have way more black fetches than red fetches. How many ways do we have to discard things? We have Liliana now. We have Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, hmm. We have Troll that we can just put in the graveyard. Also, I love that Trumpeting Carnosaur, when it enters the battlefield, you discover it's not a cast trigger. I'm going to take the Animate Dead here. And we get rewarded with a little Blood Crypt. That's pretty cool. Or it could be Gruel Turf. I don't think it's Gruel Turf, though. Maybe it is. Carnosaur does self-discard. Yeah, I'll just take Blood Crypt. I can search for a Blood Crypt. Oh, a Demonic Tutor. Hmm. Also, Windswept Heath, but I don't think Windswept Heath is as good. It only gets Bayou. It doesn't actually get Xander's Lounge. It only gets Bayou and Overgrown here and Godless Shrine. Uh, I think we're just taking the Demonic Tutor. Golgari Rot Farm, Savai Triome, 
we, we if we took that thespian stage, we would have actually gotten the dark depths. Depths. Um, it could just be tropical island here. Like, it's one of our. It's one of the lands. I think. Spelunking makes our lands come into play untapped. Yeah, let's take Golgari Rot Farm here. Let's try these Karoos. I mean, we have four fatties here, and if we're reanimating like a grief, I think that's totally fine as well. Reanimating any of these four guys is totally fine, especially if we like turn one cycle troll in order to turn two animate dead or or death it. I think that's totally reasonable. Scrubby Bubby. Scape shift when we have Valakut and Prismatic Omen. Yes. Yes, let's do that. Boseju, Atraxa, when we're also trying to reanimate things. Yes, that should not even still be in the pack. Yeah, I don't know, man. Prismatic Omen, Scape Shift, and Atraxa in this pack it seems pretty good. I mean, we still have Animate Dead and Death and Demonic Tutor. This deck seems pretty sweet. Honestly, if we just got lands from here on out, I'd be totally fine with it. Ramunap X, oh, a Flash. And we have Torsten, Atraxa, and Cityscape Leveler. Cityscape Leveler doesn't do anything with Flash. Let's keep that in mind. We don't have a ton of lands going to the graveyard for ramming up. I think we just take flash and see what happens. Stomping and underground and vampiric tutor and Jetmere's garden all came back. What? How is vamp still in here? I'm taking Underground C because I think I want a blue source to, to be able to go fetch that comes into play untapped. That's insane. What is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is 12 individual lands. And we still have like 23 cards here, plus Kaito, plus Fire Covenant, plus Lotus. I mean, Torsten Atraxa and Trumpeting Carnosaur are all very fine. Actually, no, Trumpeting Carnosaur is not great. Atraxa and Torsten are pretty good, though. Like, Flash is like a two-mana draw five in this deck. We have several enchantments. Spelunking, Prismatic Omen, Virtue of Persistence. We have several Planeswalkers. We have Liliana. That's just one, I think. A Marsh Flats came back. That's the one we wanted. Okie dokie. <laughs> gets, and it gets Underground Sea, so it gets our blue source. It also gets Xander's Lounge. Wow. I'm shocked at the amount of lands that are coming back. Sort by... Can't sort by card type. That's interesting. This is 23, and I'm tempted to cut, like, Concealing Curtains for, like, Lotus, and then playing 17 lands with Lotus. I definitely think we want a glut of lands. But not too many. Just enough, you know? I don't even know if we play Flash, to be honest. I don't think it's just not worth messing up the mana base, maybe? I mean, in that case, I kind of wanted to take Stomping Ground over Underground, but I don't even think it affects us that much. Like, with Godless Shrine and Underground, we can just hard cast a Traxa. Like there's so many things to do with our mana in this in this deck. This deck seems very sweet. 
So it's going to be really frustrating when we go one, two. <laughs> oh, Gruel Turf came back. I mean, Gruel Turf seems like the the bounce line seemed pretty good with Spelunking. Plus, we want all the unique lands we can get with Field of the Dead, so. Like, on seven, if we can go Scape Shift for Valakut, Field of the Dead, six other lands, seems pretty good. Oh, this is also 22. Did I take something else out? I'll just take a bitter triumph. That seems great, especially when we're trying to discard. Wow. This is like shocking. I feel like we're getting everything. I don't understand. Savai Triumph, sure. Absolutely playable. I don't think we're gonna have any basics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Two basics. Oh, God. Nurturing Peatland. One basic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm very tempted to just put in all of these lands, add like one swamp if needed, and call it a day. There is no Blood Moon. Oh, man. Also, I just don't understand this card. Like, when you cast your first spell, choose an opponent at random, so it's always going to be your opponent. This deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to that player. Or a Planeswalker. So you can even kill their Planeswalkers with this guy. So, you play this on three, and then you play a four drop and a five drop, and they take nine? Like, if they can't deal with that guy, it just kills them? In, like, three turns? I don't know, man. <laughs> God. Also, it has this cool uh, secret layer art. Look at that shit. <laughs> what a what a ridiculous dude. Yeah, it's so funny. There's so many multiplayer cards that are really good in multiplayer, but then when you take them to single player and all the randomness is gone, they're just insane. Council's Judgment is also similar, where it's like, this was really good in multiplayer because, you know, you don't get the exact card you want, right? I think that's how it worked. Let me look at Council's Judgment. Yeah, because starting with you, each player votes for an online permanent. Right? So, like, everyone else got a say. And, like, maybe they vote for your this guy's permanent, or maybe they vote for this guy's. And, like, you know, it's not always going to be the exact one you want. But as soon as you vote for they're permanent, you're 50% of the votes. So it's like you're always going to win that. Okay, okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. We only got 16, 16 lands. Uh, this deck seems kind of sweet. It's kind of like a reanimator scape shift deck wow wowie kazowie how many lands come into play tapped and I hope spelunking actually fixes that a little bit I think it's only does it come into play tapped yes obnoxious rot farm gruel turf ravine so it's only six. That's not terrible. I 
And Valakut. Oh, geez. Oh, geez, Rick. Seven. Shocks don't, I mean, shocks don't come into play tapped. Unless you're a coward. Are you a coward? I think that's fine. I think most of our cards cost two or three. Like it's rare we're going to be, this is a two mana card. Like it's, this is a three mana card. It's rare we're going to be casting these. So actually our deck is fairly cheap. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm not looking forward to figuring out the mana for this. Hold on. Let me make sure this is, yeah. All right, cool. All right, so I paused the video and then took the liberty of figuring out the mana. Our lands currently produced, 12 of them produce black, red is nine, green is eight. So I kind of want to just add one green. I think this is double green. This is important to get down, so is Spelunking. Uh, and with 12 sources of black, I think we're probably Gucci. So I think our one basic is this guy. They they didn't even offer any. <laughs> They're like, we don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, we got the Lotus in here too, right? So we have 17 lands and a Lotus somewhere. There it is. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Let's see it. Show me what you've got. No, do not save that. Don't do it. Uh, no. We have Marsh Flats and Bloodstain. None of them get a basic forest. But they do get, both of them do get green sources. So I think that's more important. Because, like, if I was fetching, I would just get a Bayou or, uh, you know, Overgrown Tomb. Mm, I think that's it. <laughs> so... Okie dokie, let's see if this deck does anything at all or if it's just a pile of trash. I'll keep this. I kind of like being able to cycle this guy to deal three to a creature or planeswalker and then reanimate it the next turn. This is also a hand that's very, very likely to be able to kick uh, Torach. So I think we just get Xander's Lounge. It gives us double red. It doesn't give us double blue though. So let's yield until the end step and then crack this bad Larry. We don't have double green, but I think it's probably going to be easier to get double green. We already have triple black. Maybe we just get by you. Do we need blue for anything? No, we don't. I, for some reason I'm thinking domain matters, but it really doesn't. We cut the blue card, I guess like Atraxa. But it, like if we draw scape shift, I'd rather just have a second green guaranteed. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yogi dogi. Uh, that's that's the thing, all right. Um let's go tomb. Next turn we can play Badlands, cycle this guy, and then bring him back with the shrine. You know, let's we want to plan to draw a scape shift, so let's get a second green. Here's a scape shift. Well, thanks. Gee, Willikers. Oh, dude, do we just play that? Yeah, probably. Really? Wow. You're a bad person. I mean, if they tap out, we get to Torok them. That's not terrible. Mm, that's good. What did they hit? Layla and Experimental Synthesizer? Oh, so they're just playing the deck we were playing. Oh, this is this is this is gonna be juice. Y'all ready for the juice? Kick that guy. We're gonna go black, 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 quad black. We could play obliterator right now.
All right, let's see what we hit. Two lands. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Just once I would like to disrupt my opponent's plans. That's fascinating. Land. That's not a land. I was hoping to do this guy and then to this guy, but... I think we still just kill that guy. I don't need no, no, no displacer kitten shenanigans. They couldn't even draw lands with their land deck. Sure. I only have three cards and no board presence. What could be the worst that happens, you know? Okay. One card. I like it. Fashionably late to the party, huh? So let's go green. Black. Nope, black. Cast death. Targeting this beautiful baby boy. Okay, we're discovering. We're gonna hit a Lotus. Okay. It's not the best discovery, let's put it that way. Um, I mean, we can crack it, play Soul of Wind Grace. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. We don't have an extra mana, though. I think we just play this guy in... So green, black. Mm, gotta go red here. Get Bloodstained Liar back. Play Rot Farm. Bounce the Bayou. And I don't think we're discarding to gain three here. I think I'd rather just play this and then... S I don't know. I was going to say escape shift, but I don't think that's correct. Get digging. You got it. I wonder if that was their last card. Couldn't have been, right? They would have... Played it last turn. They had four mana left. And they definitely had four cards. So. They definitely drew that. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven mana. Very close to Cityscape Leveler. If we draw Torsten, we could even play it. That's kind of funny. Sahili? Sure. They're doing the things that we were trying to do. Oh, Virtue. Let's do that immediately. Lockthwain, McMockthwain. Let's go and draw a card. What does Field of the Dead actually read? You can control seven or more lands with different names. Okay. I 
If we just attack their face, they go block, block, they take seven, so they're not dead. Okay, we just win the game. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> That's, all right. Fire Covenant might be good. I can see it taking care of a lot of their one ones. Strong creature, non-land permanent with value one or less. Sure. That's decent against them, I think. Let's take Cityscape Leveler out. Okie dokie. Um, definitely keeping this. This is a turn three trumpeting carnosaur. Let's start with the Xander's Lounge. Not going to play Lotus here. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> Glad we didn't play Lotus. Yeah, don't play your don't play your things unless you're going to use them. You know. Until the end of your next turn. So I could draw a card. Oh, no, that's actually that's when he go that's when he go cast him as a creature. So let's just draw a card, but I don't feel like taking two here, do I? Black. Ooh, Vile Smasher. Huh. Now I'm just tempted to play Vile Smasher and then just deal six to them with the Carnosaur. Yep, that's fine. <sighs> Fascinating. I mean, it's gotta be just Carnosaur here, right? Let's go get a Bayou. Play Lotus. Watch Granite Scape Shift. Oh, Soul of Wind Grace. With a land in the graveyard. That's pretty good. I am satisfied with that. You got it. A little synthy. Island is fine. I'm more afraid of your red cards than your white cards here. <laughs> Chart and course. Let me draw a fire covenant. So they got four cards, right? Yeah, that seems fine. Spelunking. That's actually pretty sweet.
Because now we get to play Valakut untapped no matter what. And if we hit a second land, we can play that as well. Oh, and we did. And it comes into play untapped. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, I won't even pay two. <laughs> Have Godless Shrine enter the battlefield. Is it May? And you control enter the battlefield untapped. Have Godless Shrine enter the battlefield. Yes, what? Why would you even ask that question? That's interesting. I can choose to not have them come into play untapped? Never heard of such a thing. Um, I guess we're just getting Savai Triom here. I don't think it's Liliana. I think we're just bitter triumphing here. And that comes into play untapped. Good lord. Yeah, that's pretty good. You guys want to know a secret? I actually didn't even realize this was an attack trigger as well. I thought I was like, he, was, he has three abilities and he gets you a land when he comes into play. So that's got to be enough, right? Interesting. So I think we just troll and make him invincible. Hmm. How many mountains do we have? One, two, three right now. Where's our prismatic omen? I don't think I care about this as much. I think I'd rather just keep, <laughs> keep our boy alive. Swampy. So we'll get a Badlands and then we'll sack this to get an Overgrown. Would you like to pay two? No, and I would like it untapped. And then we'll just activate this guy. One, two, three. Discard this. That's fine. I mean, that feels pretty decent. I mean, if they treachery, it's going to be obnoxious. But it's not like we left ourselves open to it. There's nothing we can really do against a treachery. Oh my god, you can take their lands too? Okay, time warp is fine. <laughs> this guy gained two new abilities since I drafted him. That's insane. I mean, honestly, the truth is, without playing standard... Like, a lot of cards, like Soul of Windgrace, like, you just, there's too many cards coming out to memorize all of them. I used to know, like, every single common, every single uncommon, in every single set. There's just too many sets. And I'm not playing as actively, so it's like you, the cards just all blur together a lot. And that does cause, cause me to misplay every now and then. But, I mean, you know, the alternative is literally memorizing every card. And that seems like a lot harder. Right, if you're, yeah, if you're regularly playing Arena, uh, like Standard or... Why did they... Interesting. Are they just going to sack it? Did they think it was going to trigger? I'm not sure. G. 
you it tastes good. I have two cards. <laughs> two Mitches. <laughs> Hashtag two Mitches. Oh, that's that's neat. Um, so we can kill this. Kill something else. We have a lot of options here. One, two, three, four, five, so we have seven mana. The problem with Vile Smasher is that it doesn't trigger until the next turn. Um, how many things can we get rid of here? We can get rid of their creature with the Jitte and get rid of their experimental synthesis. We can Liliana make them sacrifice and we can also Bitter Triumph. We have to descend though. What is this? Just a permanent coast of the graveyard? Any card? So if a permanent card is put in your graveyard from anywhere, anywhere, you name it. Well, definitely want to kill this gentleman. This is also 12 damage. If we can just deal one extra damage, we just win, right? I don't see how, but we can do it. Well, okay, so you're saying living in a world of... I, I, I agree with you that I like... The, I personally like the surprise. I like being able to see a card post on like Twitter or Facebook and be like, wow, I've never seen that card before. That's insane. That's cool to me. The problem is not everyone has the same information. The information is out there. Our opponent could have perfect information. I don't because I don't know every card. The problem is it's not that the perfect information is unavailable. It's... It's that the people who have the time to digest it are being rewarded. And that's fine, usually. But it's not like, it's not just, like, no negative side. It's not like there's no downside to that. <clears throat> Destroy a creature. Let's get rid of this guy. Right, I, yes, yes, I agree that it separates the men from the boys, right? Like, the the difference is that I'm not, that's not what I'm responding to. I'm responding to you saying living in a world without perfect information. It's not a world without perfect information. The world has perfect information still. It's just much more difficult to attain it. The, the standard for attaining perfect information has gone way, way, way up because there's two sets released every month. Um... We're just attacking with these guys. Probably playing Smasher and keeping up Bitter Triumph. I think we're just getting back Badlands. Like, I'd rather have a Badlands than their basic mountain. Oh, okay, they're just losing Sahili. Uh... One, two, three. That's not what we wanted to cast. You know, I guess it's still fine. We'll just keep Bitter Triumph up. It's kind of funny that this particular board state has six cards from the last two sets. <laughs> like we have Trumpeting Carnosaur, Mosswood Dread Knight, Spelunking, Bitter Triumph, Molten Collapse, and okay, so five. That's still pretty good. Well, let's see if we can pay three and kill this little guy. Hey, little guy. We know they have Mana Leak, so. 
I guess we're hoping that they don't have seven damage and burn. Lightning Bolt Fire Blast. Okay, we got an NT. Really the sameness, that's hilarious because like the thing, I feel like format metagames are far more homogenous than cube drafts. My favorite part of a cube draft is I've literally never drafted a deck like this. Like, and you're, you're very unlikely to play against a deck you've seen recently. Like every deck is different and you're building it from scratch. Like. So here's the funny thing. Seven plus five, we can deal 12. So we can actually deal six to Fire Covenant and go down to one. Watch this, watch this maniac play. Let's play all our cards first and plus Liliana. Oh, yeah, so that's the thing. Like, that's kind of funny you mentioned that. If you're watching, like, LSV or Caleb, I have a feeling, I don't watch Caleb as much, but I, I have a feeling that they probably love doing the same types of strategies consistently. Oh, you see what I just did there? I just discarded this because I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, paying attention to chat. Oh, man. I'm, like, hey, let me play both my spells and then activate Liliana so that when I play my spell, ugh, that's an that's obnoxious. I think we're still fine. It's just not ideal. I uh, could not respond to it. Now we definitely did not hold the trigger for that. Uh, they did have Mystic Confluence, but wow, they have some. They have something better than Mystic Confluence in hand. Yeah, the plan was to fire conf. I, I I was afraid they would have force of will or, or force of negation, so I was like, let me have them discard their last card, and I, instead I played vile smasher because I was like, I can just play out my hand. Um, I was gonna deal six to this guy, so they couldn't pump it for four and still have it survive. And if they gained four life, they would still be at twelve, and this would be twelve. So like, we would basically win the game right there. But I think we're just attacking with Carnosaur here. And if they want to trade, that's fine. Because they have one card in hand. Otherwise, they go to one. Oh, they're just going to go to one. Okay. Well. Wait for that January unban announcement. Yeah, Prophet of Krufitz just seems like a card they're never going to unban. I think cards that untap all your stuff on other players' turns are just really good. Wow. We just lost, didn't we? Because they can cast this till the end of your next turn? Oh my god. Talk about snatching victory from the... Snapping, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory here. Jesus. Now they discard their last car, make this a 3-3 and pump it. Oh my fucking god. That's unbelievable. What an absolute punt. That's insanely frustrating. Oh, wait, they didn't even discard. They discarded Ragavan and they hit Mystic Confluence off of it. <sighs> See, again, that's just like the way things are worded. Like, that's the frustrating thing. Like, 
the brain makes these connections, right? Like 50% of cards say this until the end of the turn, you may play that card. The other 50% say until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. And you just have to keep track of like which card says which. And it's kind of obnoxious because it's very, e like when there's like 4,000 cards printed a month, it's like, okay, which one is this? Is this one of the ones that you can play till your the, the end of this turn? Or is it till the end of the next turn? I don't know. Yeah, we definitely just threw that game away with this. Ah. Yeah. I mean, the problem, like, and that's the thing about reading RTFC, right? Like, it sounds so simple on the surface. Hey, man, just read the card. But that's not how brains work. Brains make connections and they form relationships. Like, you can look at a card and if it says, hey, you may play it till the end of the next end step, you're like, okay, cool, till the end of the next end step. That's how red cards work. I know that. But now red cards are saying you can play it till the end of the next end step. And you're like, oh. Okay. And so it's like kind of hard to like re rewire your brain to not just immediately assume, you know, how the card works. So it makes, you know what I mean? Like our deck is very good. We had to win that turn. Like we literally just, oh God, we just deal them six and then they gain four and then we just kill them with 12. Oh, now I got to play a whole nother game. A whole nother game. Unbelievable. That's frustrating. We got a rot farm and a gruel turf in hand. <coughs> oh, good. This is going to be the match where they crush us, right? It's like not going to be close. Uh, might as well rot farm here, I guess. And then next time we can get Badlands into Fable. Could have also just played Badlands, kept up Bitter Triumph, and then played Bloodstain Mire. Yep, probably should have kept up Bitter Triumph, I guess. Intigon. The old lord himself. Yeah. I don't think we've seen Layla this, this match, so of course this is the match they draw it. All right. Well, next turn we can play Bloodstained into Soul of Wind Grace. So that's not terrible. Presuming they don't keep up Counterspell. dead huh well biscuits let's get just get underground C probably and we can go black green red this guy get this guy it's funny we actually haven't I feel like we haven't had a chance to cast vile smasher and to, to profit off of him they don't have a ton of cards that really benefit from Displacer Kitten here. We're also already at nine. Yep. 
Oh, Fury. That's nice. Oh, Jitte. That's nice. Fascinating. Uh, Fury is not in the graveyard. Fury is exiled. Did they not pay? Did they not pay me enough for this? They paid one for this. I guess they paid these two for for Jitte. Hello, my dear. Yep, okay. <sighs> Just taking it, because I don't really feel like trading with our soul yet. Oh, Demonic Tutor. What can we get with a Demonic Tutor? We have three free lands. Fascinating. Uh, where can I see my deck? Nowhere. I mean, you can see it here. But I wish I could see it in a larger way. Uh, we do not have K command. We could demonic tutor for molten. That doesn't kill their Jitte though. Yeah, actually this is pretty bad for us. I'm pretty sure we just threw away the last game and now we can't win. Like the only thing we can animate is a Lelia or a third path. Hmm, boy. <laughs> and we go to six. They have three cards. It's not looking good. We can discard lands to gain life. I think we just have to go look and see what we what we have. Like, I think we'll just get a better look like this. <sighs> so this is just creature or planeswalker, right? And then you destroy a non-creature island with value like one or less. Does not get rid of a Jitte. I mean, they can pump this guy twice, so I'd have to deal five, six, seven with Fire Covenant, so that doesn't work. <sighs> I like this game better when I didn't punt the win. You can get Trumpeting Carnosaur to shoot it and then cast next turn. That's not terrible, actually. They have to double... No, they have to single pump. Yeah, let's do that. And then we can reanimate it as well. Maybe this keeps us alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming they have missed a confluence. That's little Frankie's assumption. Or mana leak. I guess they can't, oh wait, I guess they can't counter this, right? It's not a spell. Boomy went to daycare today, she really likes it. That's adorable. Boy, that's adorable. Well, we're definitely blocking, because I don't want to die. They're going to pump once. 
We're gonna crack this. Get a Bayou and then Carnosaur in response. Oh, I guess we already had the land. Uh, okay. I forgot that was a rot farm and I'm just definitely not used to having rot farms in limited. That feels good. They wasted a counter. They didn't get more counters. <sighs> that could have been the situation we needed to happen. I get to see her on the cameras being a noodle while I'm at work. <laughs> That's friggin' adorable. <laughs> oh man, doggy daycare. Baby, if you're still listening, I'd be fine with getting wing stop. Okay, maybe they just don't have much and they're just trying to like, did they get hit? Did they just hit dig? That's pretty good. It does tap them out though, which is nice for us because we get a turn. Okay, that's good. I mean, it's not great. Dig is a fantastic card, but. I usually get one Buffalo because I love Buffalo and also one like sweeter. Like usually I get the Korean Q. And by one, I mean half and half. Also, I've really liked the garlic Parmesan recently. Or the lemon, is it the lemon herb or the garlic Parmesan? I'll have to check my last order. One of the dry rubs have been really good. Lemon pepper? Lemon pepper it might be. I think that one's been phenomenal. You get a follow on this all for garlic parm. <laughs> oh. Thai peanut? I've never even heard of that. Is that a thing? Do they have any weird promo flavors right now? I don't even, I don't, oh, you're talking about BWW. We're talking about the wing stop. BWW, B-dubs. Yeah, the lemon pepper one's just really, it's got a good tang to it. Unfortunately, this, this, this one round is ruining my brain. Is this round one? Oh my God. Okay, they figured it out. They got to land. They're going to equip the Jute. Wait, nope, that's not what they wanted to do. <laughs> nope, wait, how did they... How did... Interesting. Because you have to click on Jute and then choose the mode. So that was interesting that they did that. Okay, we have plays that we can make. Um, one... I'm trying not to run out of time as well. You know what I mean? This guy. Animate this gentleman. What are we hitting? Liliana. All right, deal. Hit okay, come on. Make them sacrifice. Uh, play a gruel turf bouncing underground. Get back. Bloodstained Myrino. <sighs> okay. And we can also gain life with our guy, so that's pretty good. Alright, I'm probably going to ignore chat for the next couple minutes because I don't want to time out here, so. Don't say anything life life threatening or <laughs> Sure, ignore us. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. God. Oh my god. Get your head in the, what is this? Time warp treachery? Time wetchery?
they changed their mind. They don't have great blink targets, which is nice. Like blinking a Jitte or a Mox Pearl is not super exciting. Yeah, I'm definitely considering discarding Underground Sea to gain three life. Oh, discarding Xander's Lounge actually would probably be better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. But if we don't need to, it might be nice to just have cards to loot away with Fable. But I also don't mind looting away Vile Smasher, so. Are they just passing? Yeah, if they're just passing, we're going to keep. They're not passing. They're just going to the main phase. Okay, I'm pretty sure they have Mystic Confluence. They have to, right? That's interesting. Yes. This guy and this guy. Oh, that's fascinating. I don't think we have enough lands, actually. So, one, two, three. All of these guys are lethal. And by, I don't think we have enough lands. I don't think we have enough mountains is what I'm trying to say. This is 13 damage. <clears throat> and we can gain nine life here, so. That feels safe. We could also save our Lord. They're just taking it, okay. Uh, I don't think there's any benefit to making us discard. Actually, it turns on Liliana, so I'm gonna discard Scape Shift here. I think they're just going to bounce three guys. I hope they forget about Raging Ravine then. Yep, that's what we figured. So that, that was pretty good. Being able to discard that guy to kill the the Displacer Kitten before they could do any shenanigans is pretty good. <laughs> Dashing Ragavan. Attacking with Jitte. I think I should have gained some life. Do I have a land I can get? Oh, we don't need it. We have treasure. Uh, okay, sure. Attack. Uh, red. Green. Red. One, two... I mean, once we just run them out of creatures, it feels a lot better. That's fine. If they play a creature, we just kill it with Liana. Wonderful. This guy, Lord of Windy. Get back a land. Let's discard Underground Sea. And then we'll just pass. I'm keeping up lands here. We have two lethal threats. Okay, that guy's fine. Doesn't do anything right now. Oh, they have a Jitte that's four. Oh, that's trouble. That's troublesome. Oh, we gain life. <laughs> Never mind. That's the whole point of keeping these lands in the hand. 
Yep, you got it. Let's see if they use that one counter. I bet they do. No blocks. Okay, but they have six potential life and I have seven on board. <laughs> Okie dokie, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we can go to seven. That's hilarious. Are you serious? This is how the game ends? <sighs> Wait, no, that's six. We go to one. Okay. We don't have a green source though. Can we get one? Nope, we die. <laughs> Because we don't have a green. Oh my god. Wow. That's unreal, dude. Hilarious. Pretty sure they had to top deck time warp too, right? Because they had like, they had no cards in hand. They drew this off the time warp turn. So the time warp was the card they drew on their turn. We made them discard a card. They had two cards in hand. They discarded one, played fairy mastermind, drew time warp, then killed us. And we just literally just didn't even have a second green source. Like my opponent literally needs to go play the lottery. Cause I, I can't even imagine how you can be luckier than that. Like, that's the most amazing, so fucking frustrating. And, like, it's worse because we obviously threw the game out. Like, we it was our fault. We punted. I mean, if you just go turn one Torok, that seems pretty decent. I mean, turn one four three with a him to Torak attached seems pretty good. Cancel life, yep. Cast the kicker black. Balefall and Scrubland. Oh, they just missed the land drop. Well, that was pretty good for us, I guess. I mean, no matter what you take, I'll kill it with the other card, so. Oh, we just went again. The <laughs> They're like, oh, okay. Well, that was fun. That makes up for the hour and a half gruel fest that the first round was that was incredibly disappointing on multiple metrics. Oh, another Lotus, another Lotus hand. <sighs> Turn one Vile Smasher, is that any good? I don't know, but I'll keep it. If we draw a big card, we can actually go bitter triumph. No, we don't have a we don't have a target, right? Okay, that's good. 
I think we just Xander's Lounge here. We want the Black Source. I don't think it's Vile Smasher on turn one. That doesn't feel good. See if they go deep cavern bat. Narset. Now we can deep now we can bitter triumph. Is it possible they whiff here? Eh, kind of. <laughs> it's not the best. Drawing a big creature here to bitter to, to bitter triumph their Narset and then also reanimate would be wonderful. Grill turf, got it. We have yet to draw Prismatic Omen when we've had Scapeshift and Valakut. Um, and we have yet to draw Field of the Dead. Hmm. I think we're just Marsh Flatting and then Bitter Triumphing here. What are we getting? We have green, we have red. It's gotta be black. Probably bayou seems fine. I mean, yeah, Wasteland and Shirtmine are both in the format, but, like, I mean, that just means don't play those cards in general, right? Like, true name nemesis, eh? Okie dokie. We have two cards. Oh boy, does our hand just not do anything. Red, black, this one. Carnosaur would be nice. Play it off a of Black Lotus, put in Raging Ravine. As long as they don't put like a Jitte on this guy, I think we're good, you know? Five cards. They've took. They took eight there. Jesus. Yep. No blocks. You gonna fall in Shinobi? No. Okay. Oh my god, dude! Come on. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh god. If I cast Lotus, it actually counts as our first spell, so that's pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> well, 
life. We built two more, put them to four. That's kind of funny. What if we can win with like life next turn? We can't. This actually deals them three, doesn't it? So they would have been to three. We could have played Lotus. No, we had to play life off of Lotus in order for it to, to be lethal. So I'm going to play Lotus now though, because if we draw something big, I don't want this to be the, the trigger. So we'll see if this actually sticks around for a turn. Lotus and Vile Smasher is a big non-bow. Yeah, they scooped a Torak. They missed a land drop, and then they saw our hand was two removal spells after playing a deep cavern bat. So they're like, oh, well, no matter what I take, you're just going to get back the other one. Or get it back due to removal from the other one. Yep, going to eight. I have no idea what this deck is doing. They played a Sylvan Library off of a Lotus Petal and have not seen another green... So oh, there we go. Speak spoke too soon, I guess. Okie dokie. Yeah, nothing to do. Uh, four cards. Liliana. <laughs> oh. Ooh, how cute. Horston. Hmm. You take six, go to two. Uh, interesting. I'm almost tempted to put their Euro into play to get the extra land drop. And to draw an extra card. I mean, the problem is we're not going to have any turns left. They're going to attack us down to two. I guess if we cast this, it kills them. Yeah, the problem is, like, we just need to maximize our turns here. Okay, and bounce the forest. Could play Virtue. Uh, I think we're just playing Torsten. And the three life helps too. Like if they have anything that deals two damage here, it's like, it's not great for us. Like even if they have Elvenwald Oddity or something, like it just, 
puts us down to one now instead of killing us. Um, hello? <laughs> hey, babe. I can hear you and Hunter clomping around up there. I hope he's doing okay. Okay. We have two seven drops, so like... He can't walk. Yeah, I figured that was a problem. How long does it usually take for that to wear off his little, his little grogginess? Oh, interesting. So they have to have an answer for this guy too. So that's unfortunate because I assume they do. Okay. You got it. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. That's, that's a thing. So now we just need a, a card that costs four or less. Uh, Hunter got a dental today, so he's he had to get put under, and he's got a bunch of he got a bunch of teeth pulled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. So what happens if we crack this <clears throat> to make our lands one ones? Then we have five attackers. They take three from this or one from this? They block here block two lands, they take three, and then they go to one. That's got to be correct, right? I'm going to play this and crack it for green. And we'll just see if we can make it a little easier than that. Oh, Demonic Tutor. That might do it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Only Demonic Tutor is going to trigger. What do we get? What do we get that deals them too? Can someone tell me if this is going to deal one or three? I think it's one because you're only casting life. So I think we Demonic Tutor. This is five attackers. They can block three and they take, sure, let's life. Oh, but they gain life from the from the deep cavern bat. <clears throat> okay, this is actually fine. They go to three. Do we have anything that can deal three? Let's find out. Because that would be great. This guy just deals damage to creatures or planeswalkers. Um... Does Molten, does Molten Collapse do it? Not really, no. They have no permanence that costs one or less. Man, if we had a Fire Covenant here, that'd be insane. We could just, they have no cards in hand. What do we have? How much mana? I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> we have 17 minutes though. So actually I'm, I'm still reeling from the time from last game. So we have one, two, three, four, five mana. Five mana. Like we could get a removal spell, kill this guy, get back virtue, kill the other guy. That seems good. Carnosaur. Kill one. Uh, scape shift, we don't have enough lands. Nor do we have enough mountains in our deck to get, so that's not going to do it. Um, this is tricky. 
I think it's just Carnosaur kill a bat, kill the other bat, go to two, and then they, they're just in top deck mode. Uh, we want to kill the bat with the virtue on it. And then we're going to lock the way and scorn the other bat so that they don't gain life. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven mana, so we can just cast this next turn if we survive. So they got a top deck in the top three cards. Oh. <clears throat> this is intense. He had some major orals. Yeah, that's what, that's what it was. They basically rejuvenated his entire mouth. Oh, and we in the okay. That's, oof. All right, all right. Let's see if we can finish off this, this match with a beautiful, a beautiful victory. Uh, this has a lot of mana. It has a lot of colors. But it has an 8-drop and a, a land cycler, which is basically just another land, right? I think we got to ship this hand. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> Don't like that. I mean, if we can draw two lands, we're great. I'm going to keep this because any land actually lets us tutor for a bounce land. And we're on the draw. So, you know, it's a gamble. But you know what they say about the gambling and the future in. Oh, that guy's annoying. Look at that. We did it. Still got field. Oh, Tundra and Scrubland. The perfect Esper mana base. Hmm. If we don't hit a land, it's awkward. I think we have to give them a card here. I don't love it. Or we can get Lotus. This is only the first spell, right? Yeah, okay. No. Okay. Now we can discard this and next turn cast Death. I don't trust Liliana into Tundra because they're definitely just going to counter whatever we play, right? That's why they don't they don't counter Demonic Tutor. You don't counter Black Lotus. You just counter the card we play with those cards. That's fine. Like they're not going to be able to counter Trumpeting Carnosaur's ability, but I don't want to be like Demonic Tutor, Black Lotus, Liliana counter. Oh, okay, that's good. <coughs> yeah, we're just taking one here. Uh, actually, is there a reason to do it now? Not really, right? We could just do it on our turn as well. This is getting countered 100. Wow, that didn't get countered? Get out. Oh, and we get to cast a Spelunking. Oh, this is actually pretty sweet. Put this onto the battlefield. E yes. Tap it. Return this. Replay it. Play Fable. And that was pretty good. Sure. <laughs> 
That was a solid turn, man. Solid mold of six with a one land. Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> this is what father likes. I think we could probably pitch Liliana. This is two black sources here. So unfortunately, oh, but if we make a, oh, we're making a treasure. So we can definitely Torok. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> yes, pitch this. I think we're keeping the rest. Kicker, black, black, black. Pro white too, man. That's pretty good. Shorukai, Shorukai Genesis engine, which is a pet card of mine for sure. Uh, Watson is furious. Yeah, we had to shut the door. We had to shut the bedroom door so Watson and Wally can't go in there with Hunter because... Uh, they were just being weird to him. So they're really mad. I don't want to play this guy in case they have like a Wrath of God or something. <laughs> oh man. Oh, an LED. Are we dead? Has anyone seen an LED and not felt like they were dead? Did they just cast it off the top? Oh, we just get to draw. Or put more counters on this guy. Is there an Echo of Eons in here? No, not that I see. Are they just casting a card at the top? That's that's pretty good. That was on the top of your library? Wow, that's really impressive. Again. Lucky, 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 lucky. Brain freeze. Targeting us. Sure. Yep. <clears throat> yep. If there's a land on top, we just win, so... Sure. Wow, they go to one. Okay, so they can't actually cast anything else, right? Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Oh, I do like, I appreciate that they tap their own talisman to kill themselves. That's, that's actually classy. That's a class act. <coughs> All right, well, do we want concealing curtains against them? Watson wants to put his head in Hunter's mouth, but he's much too drunk and Watson can be cranky, so it's not a good... Yeah, that's weird. Does it... Is it because he smells like the maybe the blood and like the open flesh? Is that a thing? Like he's smelling like the, like the, the open wounds, basically? I think he smells a lot of things he wants to investigate. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we'll keep this hand. Katie recently uh, informed me on how dog smells work. And I was always like, why does, why does, because Watson has been doing this thing where he's, he's like eating poop recently. And we're like, Watson, please. But he's been doing this thing. I guess he's doing the thing where he's eating poop. I don't even say he's doing this thing. Um, but we've been, you know, I asked her, I'm like, why do they do that? Because it smells terrible. But she's, she told me that dogs take in each individual smell. Um, they don't smell the same way humans do. So, like, if you have, I'm going to play the Raging Ravine here. 
if you have a cake, right, a dog will smell like chocolate and flour and egg and sugar. And I'll smell all these things individually. So when they're smelling like something like poop, they're actually smelling all of the components of it, which is super interesting. I'm just going to play this and uh, I guess we're Mosswood Dread Nighting here. <clears throat> And by that, I mean dread whispering. Ooh, Come on, Black Lotus. Her theory is full of shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, it's not really a theory. It's, it's, but that's... <clears throat> but that was pretty funny. I appreciated that. Um, So we have multiple lands that are coming into play tapped here. Oh, I think we just play this guy, you know? Just give this guy a little gopher. And then we can play either black red or black red. Fascinating. <coughs> well, we have a godless shrine, so let's play the Xander's Lounge. And I meant that in all its innuendos. <laughs> I knew. You know, I had a feeling. Look at this guy. Look at this old. Look at this old so and so. I mean, I kind of like Turok Dread Canter here, right? That's a good dude. I can just go get a Badlands. That's a Badlands. Kick it. Uh, we're going to go black and black and black and black. Toroch. You ever say Toroch? Is that funnier? I don't know. Maybe. Don't want to get in there with this guy. So I'll just pass. We're just, we're literally just on course to just cast an Atraxa here. So that's pretty cool. We got the blue, we got the white, green, you name it. Every color you need. I got it. <coughs> this deck was very good. The pilot just didn't <clears throat> perform admirably in the first round. That's unfortunate. Wish I could have hit that off my Torok. Reign of Filth. What is happening? What? Are there bullets? Is that a little, a little -ing? Wow, every game with this guy, huh? Every game with this guy. Well, I'm F6ing because I have no responses. Oh, a Demonic Tutor? That's probably the end, right? Oh, uh, I used to play WoW, but that was probably the only MMORPG I really played with any regularity. <coughs> <clears throat> nice. Oh, they're at 12. They're basically dead. Oh, that's good. They're at 8. <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? Wait, why did they concede? What? Did they, they cast a dig through time off the top, not realizing they were at eight, I guess. Because if you just don't cast this, you're at eight with the Genesis engine, my Torok and an Urza. And I have one to three, two. Like, I definitely think you win this game. If you just don't cast, this. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okie dokie. Well, Bullets of Citadel is a hell of a drug. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Cause it was definitely a fun deck. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you next time.